Henry's definition, I chunk those into message units. And overall, there is about 400 message units um, evidenced online within the announcement chat discussion and in, in email tools. And then I analyze those using two phase uh, qualitative coding. I also looked at the event logs. Now, these, this is the data that's actually from the back end of the system, of the management system. And this is all quantitative data. Um, and I analyzed it both at the tool, the group, and the individual levels for uh, differences between those, as well as over time. So when I talk about a log event or an event file that's logged, that could be any action that happens on lunch. That's uh, people logging in and out of the site, that's a new announcement, a new file gets deleted or gets uploaded. All that activity gets logged, and that's what I looked at. Also, two online surveys, one at the beginning and one at the end of the study. And the online surveys really help bolster many of the findings um, about the other, from, kind of from the other data sources. And I also ask them attitudinally about how they thought about different tools and different activities within the LMS. And also, they're also descriptive, so I ask students um, in uh, big uh, text blocks to kind of explain their activity, both online and outside the LMS. Also conducted several focus group interviews, nine in total. And again, this, group, this focus group interview is how to explain in detail the students you've seen on that, uh, the LMS. So I knew their, from their messages what they were doing, but not necessarily always why. So the focus group interviews helped explain what was going on. And finally, I also interviewed the instructor before and after uh, the course. And those interviews provided context and background for the course, the term project, and students' general approach to using LMS. Uh, for their course project. Wow, a lot of data. So, that's, now it's time to dig into that data. So the first thing I want to look at is uh, set question A, and this is really focuses on what was taking place within the LMS in terms of different types of peer interaction. So again, I have nearly 400 total message units online, so there's quite a bit of uh, activity going on at the site. And when we coded that, 38% of that was basic interaction, or uh, content that is really kind of on the basic level. So the bulk of that, 35% of those messages, message units, were about arranging face-to-face -face meetings. So when are we going to meet, when are we going to you know, actually talk about this stuff? Or another 20% was just general off-topic discussion things, things like sports or travel. So an example of what I'm talking about, so this is an example from one group that they're talking about when you should arrange a uh, meeting at 9.30 at, at night at the undergraduate library. And to come back to my overall model, I'm talking about things that are in that green outer circle here. So these are all basic interaction. They're not collaborative, they're not construction. instruction. They're all pure interaction, but they're more basic level. So our next, there's a whole bunch of collaboration that was evidenced online. Um, now while a lot of these messages were, many messages, messages you can see were collaborative, they were even distributed between the groups. Um, all 21 groups who used the LMS had at least one collaboration, uh, at least one message in CODA's collaboration, but only about half the groups had more collaboration than, inter than basic interaction. So definitely not evenly distributed. Um, and there's lots of different topics within those messages. Um, you see the, the most popular is about biology concepts or procedures. But they also talked about articles, they talked about writing, they talked about peer reviewing um, each other's writing documents, about the details of their grant proposal, all sorts of different things. I'll give a quick example about what I mean by biology concepts and procedures. Here's one group that talked about RNA quantification and the different uh, biological procedures for doing this in vivo and in vitro. And coming back to the model, I'm talking about things that are in the blue ring. Now, this doesn't mean that they're not also basic interaction as well. So these are things that are all peer interaction, but they're more they're more tightly distinguished as collaboration. So again, we're getting further and further into this center of the circle. And 
and finally we had knowledge construction, and there wasn't a lot going on. Out of 397 total units, only 10 of them were coded as knowledge construction, and half of those were about biology concepts or procedures. Um, so one thing I want to note is that this does not mean students did not learn. What this means is that there's not a whole lot of evidence that they were doing that learning online within the LMS. So that learning is happening somewhere else because you know you'd imagine in a term long project like this, they're doing a lot of learning about concepts and about how to write a grant. So whether it's happening face to face or somewhere else, another kind of technological tool is yet to be discovered. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. And so here's an example. Um, here's student one saying I'm confused about a concept because they thought they were rim dyed, they thought they were leases, or we're telling them that. And student two is trying to clarify that kind of misconception for student one saying the leases are telling us what molecules are, molecules are circulating in the blood, and the flow is telling us something else. And again, coming back to the model, this is, um, these are items that are distinguished even further. These are all peer interactions. These are further distinguished as knowledge construction in the center of that circle. That's what students are doing online. Um, but for those of you who are familiar with LMS, the LMS activity happens within some sort of tool, whether that's an announcements type tool or a discussion tool or a chat tool. So now that I know what students did with the LMS, I wanted to look at how they were doing their peer interaction. So one of, the first, one of the things I did is I asked them in their surveys um, how they felt that um, different tools were useful for collaboration with fellow group members. And they were rating those on a scale from one to five. So you can see that um, on that five point scale, resources and announcements were rated fairly highly. It seems to they're pretty useful. This is the uh, survey at the end of the term, the second survey. And then there's a chunk of tools, like email, archive, chat, web content, discussion. They're a little more neutral. And then schedule a wiki, they're not quite as sure those are useful for collaboration. Now the other thing I did is I compared that you I compared their attitudes with actually how they used the tools. So this is from the log data that I mentioned earlier. You can see that 50% of all activity was within the resources tools. So that's all file made. That's files being uploaded and downloaded by different students. And out of 21 groups, 100% used the resources tool. So it's a very popular tool to use. Um, you might notice if you're uh, you know, uh, quick adder that there's a big chunk missing. It's because a lot of activity is just students logging in and out of site. So that's just a log in, log out activity. Um, so generally, when you look at this overall, what happens is that the tools that students used, they liked more, and right? they thought were more useful for collaboration. So they used resources announcements, and some of these chat, so they, they think those are more useful, and the tools they didn't use as much, like only two, group, only two groups tried the wiki, they didn't find that quite as valuable or useful for collaboration. I also asked students qualitatively uh, what tools they thought would be most useful for collaboration. And uh, there were about 40 students that answered this question, and 39 of them mentioned resources. And the reason why is they allowed them to pool the articles together, and then they were able to download those articles and other mediums and talk about them. It also allowed them to review work completed by other group members. And that's also what the announcements tool was used for. It allowed them to keep track of what was going on and assess overall group progress towards their end goal. So we know what students did and basically how they did it. The next question I had is when the students interacted and used the LMS to position as a term long project. So, um, these are the three different types of peer interaction that I discussed earlier. So here is basic interaction. You can see uh, there's two uh, course milestones here. They had a proposal summary that was about two pages long that was due in early February. Then they had a final grant proposal due in early April. You can see that a lot of activity is centered around those, especially when we look at collaboration. There's a lot of collaboration right before the deadlines. Even knowledge construction, which there wasn't a lot of, was also written for the deadline. So shocking students procrastinate. And I we know from the content, I know that from the content of the peer message peer message units, that students referenced the file they uploaded and downloaded from their LMS sites. And we know that we, we just saw that 50% of all the activity online was with the resources. So I also wanted to look at resource activity over time. So you can see that they are uploading stuff, you know, a bunch of stuff early in the term before the 
proposal, and then again right before the final deadline was due. And they're accessing those files a lot right 